Pakistan um, has improved, if you look at the global gender gap uh, report, it has improved its position by about three points. It was at uh, second last position in the previous report. And uh, the indicators that have enabled Pakistan to jump include the economic participation and opportunity uh, sub-index, which basically means that the wage equality for similar work has been one of the areas in which Pakistan has achieved parity uh, for similar work. And I think this has been possible because of growing awareness and efforts to you know, raise awareness on these issues. And so, of course, all the indicators are uh, going towards that direction. And that has also happened because uh, there's been a gradual advancement as far as the secondary and tertiary education is concerned, as far as your health is concerned. Uh, as far as the efforts to include labor force participation of women is concerned and of course all the kind of gender sensitization that has gone uh, which the work of different civil society organizations and NGOs has resulted in achieving. So as far as the legal measures are concerned uh, we still don't have an equal pay act which of course is something that uh, is missing from the legal stream but on an industry level uh, and on an administrative level, uh, different companies are coming up with their own policies that are trying to include more women and ensure parity as far as wage, uh, wage equality for similar work is concerned. And in this regard, I do want to highlight the policy as far as business and human rights is concerned and the National Action Plan that the Ministry of Human Rights came up with. Uh, I think that has been one of the most instrumental uh, pieces of policy that has steered the government and has put this on the agenda as well, uh, amongst other things. Pakistan is an over-legislated country, as they often say, and uh, then they always also often say that implementation is where the problem is. Uh, why do we have issues with implementation? I would like to actually step back and say that, you know, even though we are an over-legislated country, but I think an additional challenge that we have is that our laws are very poorly drafted. And, you know, the example is the Daycare Act that has just recently been passed, uh, which obviously has punishment for non-compliance, but it doesn't really tell you who is going to be issuing those warnings. It doesn't really give you a framework. So the laws are poorly drafted, which is why their implementation then becomes extremely challenging. Uh, secondly, in Pakistan, there's a culture that, you know, it's not just the legislation uh, that is enough to constitute the law uh, you know, to become operative in practice, you need uh, supplementary rules on ground to make sure that the law that has been passed is operative. And in most of the times what happens is that you do get a law passed by the parliament and it is hailed as, you know, another uh, tick box in, in the, you know, array of legislation that we have. But the accompanying rules do not get made and therefore implementation becomes difficult. And the third reason is that uh, political will turmoil and the institutional breakdown in the country that we see uh, often makes the implementation a real challenge as far as you know implementing all these provisions are concerned. So either you don't have the laws or you don't have the rules and the structures on ground that can implement the provisions or you have the lack of political will and the institutional breakdown. Uh, and finally, of course, the resources that are required to implement some of these provisions are also something that in face of the economic difficulty, Pakistan experiences a big challenge in terms of, you know, realizing all the promises and commitments that it makes in these legislations and, uh, you know, even international commitments. Pakistan fares fairly low as far as the representation of women in the justice sector is concerned. We did a baseline study and uh, that quantifies the data and gives you a very clear uh, picture of what the gender representation looks like as far as Pakistan is concerned. And I'll tell you, and this is backed by official evidence and data that we collected in 2020, uh, not much has changed since then. So we still have 15% uh, women in judge as judges. And out of these 15%, the majority are in the subordinate courts who come through the competitive examination. But as far as the higher judiciary is concerned, you know, because the system is based on arbitrary, uh, you know, appointments, uh, you just have barely 1% of women in the superior judiciary. Likewise, we just have 12% advocates that are female. 
of which only 4% are advocates of the Supreme Court and that effectively impacts their representation in the Pakistan Bar Council as well, which is the uh, apex regulatory body of lawyers in the country. Uh, likewise, of course, only 15% prosecutors, barely 2% of members of the Bar Councils in Pakistan are women uh, and we just have about 4% women in police. So, uh, you know, law firms, you have very negligible representation of women in senior leadership roles and the data for students is not available. So, uh, you know, that's where things stand as far as representation is concerned in the legal fraternity in Pakistan.